PNR Networks is a member of Patreon. Show your love for our shows by joining our ongoing fundraising campaign and get some fantastic perks in return. Check it out and become a Patreon sponsor. You can sign up at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, backslash PNR Networks. And thanks for your support. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No E's. That's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Dot com. Blueberry dot com. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. It's Kim versus TC in the battle of the lists. My list is better. My list is better. My list is better. No, it's not. My list is better. Kim or TC, who has the better list? From Subject Cinema, this is Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and TC Kirkham. Another week here on Front Row 5 and 10, brought to you by the good people that bring you Subject Cinema. That would be me and him, the me being Kim Brown. And the him being T.C. Kirkham. Welcome. Hi. We're a week late with this because we got sidetracked with all the Boston Springs of Festival special stuff mm-hmm. last week. We just had to push something out of the way. Promise it won't happen anytime in the near future, we hope. We hope. But we're back with the list we were supposed to have last week, so that'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is your list. Yeah, it is. And don't forget, you can always contribute. We're always looking for a list ideas. We'd really like And we'd to. love it if you'd get involved at front row at pnrnetworks.com. My list choice this week is going to music. Mm-hmm. Music we can't stand. <laughs> the top ten worst songs I absolutely loathe, otherwise known as songs I would collect every copy of and throw into the sun if I could. Yes. Don't mince words, Bones. Say how you really feel. Now, it's interesting that we took different tactics. We did. All of mine are just songs I've always hated because they just drive me up the wall. Okay. Yours, you went for lyrics you you rather don't like. I well. went for, for the most part, mm. I went for lyrics that I don't like. I don't, I just, you know, there was something about the song that grated on me. Yeah, that's mine mostly. Um... It's kind of a mix of things. Okay. And one song's just on here because it's just effing stupid. So <laughs> I think we both have that song on this there list. There it is. All right. Before you get started, mm-hmm. let me run down my runners-up. I have 10 runners-up that I couldn't find room for because we're not doing a top 20. It's a top 10. So in no particular order, these songs, these 10 songs, just missed my top 10. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't be unhappy to throw these under a bus. Okay? Or a steamroller. Or a steamroller. Holding Back the Years by Simply Red. Hmm. Love is in the Air by John Paul Young. It's a disco song from 1978. Jump by Chris Cross. Always hated that song. What's Up by Four Non Blondes. The Humpty Dance by Digital Underground. Mostly because I just can't stand the video. Happy by Pharrell Williams. Pharrell Williams. Because I'm happy. Although I love Isaiah's version from... Uh, X Factor Australia. His version is really good. And I like those downtrodden versions, those kind of slow, moody versions I, that uh, were up on. Those were different. Don't Worry, Be Happy by Bobby McFerrin. Jump Around by House of Pain, which I know you love. And yeah. I Can Help by Billy Swan, which I've sort of developed a tolerance of because it's used in Paranoid Park. I know, but I, yeah, but you had a really visceral reaction. I hate that, that song. That I've always hated that song. And the one song that's on here is strictly because, not because the song is bad, but because the lyrics are just stupid. Summertime Girls by LFO. Okay. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> New Kids on the Block had a bunch of hits. Chinese food makes me sick. I'm like, oh, there you go. Brilliant. No, no offense to the lead singer who's no longer with us, but so those are my ten runners up, and my mm-hmm. the ten that are on the top ten. You know, I really hate. Yeah, I really hate these songs. Right. 
Uh, I would like to bring up, for the most part, um, on my list, I didn't put, like, you know, I didn't put 1 through 10, you know, 10 through 1 being every single song by Justin Bieber. You know, no. There, there's certain I didn't artists, do that either. Except you know, one. There's certain artists that I didn't bother doing that with because that would be like, you know, fish meat barrel meat Uzi. Yeah. You know, it's and Justin Bieber's one of them because I just can't stand that little douche. I like a couple and, I like you know, I, I go song by song with Justin Bieber. I like Prey. I like somebody to love. I like as long as you love me. As far as those go, that's about it. Everything else he's done I'm sorry isn't bad. But I like Jack Vigeon's cover better. So it's like, okay. Anyway. All right. Top so, 10 top from 10. you. Top 10 And we're going to explain me. why we hate each of these yes. two. So. We, we don't just hate them because, you know, they suck. Don't hate, hate me hate because I'm beautiful. Hate me because they suck. No, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Hate me because you're shallow and misguided. <laughs> um, <laughs> number 10. My number 10 is a song that I don't think I had ever heard before we... Whereas we were still watching Dancing with the Stars when I heard it because somebody used it in a routine. Oh, yeah. We should say that you said that you think I'm going to be upset with a lot of your list. I think some of my songs are going to be like, you know. I know hey, one song but, on my list you really like, and I'm not. I, I'm, I, I, but you also know I really can't stand it, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, my number 10 is a song by a British artist named Cher Lloyd. It's a song called Want You Back. The whole I only vaguely know that one, so. I mean, and I was like, okay, it's got a cute little beat to it, you know, and I was like, you know, you know, nice, dancey little pop song. And then she's listening to the lyrics. And then I went and actually listened to the song, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> and then I saw the video and went and read the lyrics, and I'm like, are you, what? <laughs> the whole thing of the song is that it's told from the point of view of a girl who had been dating this guy, but she just... She says at the beginning of the song, Hey boy, you never had much game. Thought I needed an upgrade, so I went and walked away, way, way. Now I see you're hanging out with that other girl in town looking like a pair of clowns. So she dumped this guy, and now he's found somebody new, and she's upset. Mm. <clears throat> the chorus is... um. Like, remember all the things that you and I did first, and now you're doing them with her, so on and so forth. And it's like, um, boy, you can say anything you want. I don't give a sh. No one else can have you. I want you back. I'm like, <laughs> F you, you little shallow bitch. Mm. You know, whatever happened to sisters before misters? You know, you dropped him. So it's kind of like a really slam version of Skater Boy by Al 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 Avril Lavigne or I'm, I'm like, Amnesia by uh, Five Seconds of Summer. You decided he wasn't good enough for you. You dumped him. Now he goes and decides to have a life without you, and you're upset about it? <laughs> F you, you little tramp. I'm Family sorry. show. And that is not the word that I wanted to use. I know, I know. I'm like, this is a terrible precedent to set for girls. This is awful. You know, I mean, and I am not one of these militant feminist people, And but if you are, that's great. But I'm just saying, this is setting a terrible example. It's lousy. Shame on you. Um, <laughs> my number 10, want you back. Cher Lloyd. My number 10 is a song that you rather like, but not as much as you like the one that's further up on my list. I don't know what it is about this song <laughs> that has always irritated me. It came out while I was working at DiscJockey.com, and I'm like, it. it's just, number one, it's sexist. Number two, it's just annoying. And number three, we noticed, if you notice, the 90s seems to be the biggest decade in history for one-hit wonders. Mm -hmm. It tracked a little bit into the 80s and a little bit into the into the oddies. Mm -hmm. And I think this came out in 99 or 2000, but it is never, ever, ever going to be on my most played list. My number 10 is Mambo Number no. 5 by Lou Vega. Vega. I have never liked this song. It's so, so namby pamby and repetitive and sexist. I mean, it's like, okay, 
Yes, okay, I agree. It's not as sexist as something like Rico Suave, but still, it's, uh, which I like, but it's like, um, I don't know. There's just some, and the video is just so Retro? white, white. There's just white clothes everywhere in that video and gray. I'm like, ugh. And what'd you say? Retro? Retro. Yeah, I'm very you retro know, his too. Re- his look is very retro. I've I nev- like I, it, but that's, you know. And I, I know he had another minor hit, but this one just, ugh. Never figure out how this thing spent weeks at weeks and weeks at the top of the charts. Number 10, Mambo Number 5 by Lou Vega. Okay. Um, this is one of the older songs on my list. And I remember hearing it when I was a kid and not really paying much attention to it. Um, <laughs> and then I got older and I was like, what did he just say? Uh-oh. And and then I went and really listened to the lyrics and looked them up and read them. And I was like, the hell? <laughs> uh, my number nine from 1968 uh, from the album Aftermath. Under My Thumb by the Rolling Stones. <laughs> <laughs> Under My Thumb is basically telling the story of a guy who has it is in a relationship that sounds pretty damn toxic, you want my opinion. Mm-hmm. And Oh, I forgot that song. The um, I hate that song too. Oh, the Britney Spears song? Yes, I yeah. hate that song. Um <laughs> Apparently there's been a, a shift of power in their relationship and now he's the more dominant person in the relationship okay fine whatever but it's the way that the the lyrics are so incredibly misogynistic at one well mick was good at that in the 60s and 70s he did a lot of songs like that the, the the one point in this the song where he refers to the girl as the squirming dog who's just had her day, and I'm like, excuse me. Did I think you, he was still married to Bianca at the time. Too. Did wow. you just refer to a woman as a squirming dog? Oh, oh joy! I'm you've sorry. Got, you've got her feminist up. Good. I'm sorry if a guy said anything <laughs> like that to me. I would kick him in the crotch so hard his balls would slam into his tonsils. I hate this song. I really, really despise it. I would have never guessed. Uh, My number nine, Under My Thumb by the Rolling Stones. You know where you can take me? You could do with that thumb? (laughs) Sit and spin. Um, Sorry. Turn that some bitch sideways and And stick stick it straight straight up up your your candy candy ass. ass. (laughs) You damn right. Baywatch is coming out this weekend, in case you didn't know. Um, my number nine, we actually saw them perform this live on TV when we were in England. I'm like, why is this thing a hit? You were like, why is this thing a hit? Because it may, the lyrics are just nonsensical crap. Well, nonsensical crap <laughs> always doesn't make a bad song. I mean, I'm sorry, I know you love it, but Stars on 45 is just rambling off band names. Big Starting deal. on 45 is Beatles medleys, mostly. Well, it's... Are no. you talking about um, Life is a Rock? Yeah. Life is a Rock with Radio Roll Me by yeah. Reunion, and you, later a dra- great cover by Tracy Ullman. You're just rambling off band names really fast. And labels, Whoop and stuff like that. Yeah. do. No, sorry. No, that's hard to do. That's a great so song, but this one is not... calling, but I wouldn't want to But that's not to what I mean, nonsensical lyrics. Right. This is. It's It sort of tells a story, I guess... But it doesn't help that the lead singer is butt ugly. <laughs> oh, that's charming. Has voice that sounds like it, uh, like he swallowed razor blades. Oh, okay. And I just don't find them talented. They're another one of these one-hit wonders from the early 90s that just for some reason came in a flash and sold tons of records and then disappeared. The song is mm 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 by Crash Test Dummies. Mm-hmm. This song, it it's like, oh my God, really? When I was working for the Trans World chain of, of stores, we had so much crap come through the stores and so much other good stuff that nobody noticed. Mm-hmm. And for every piece of crap that was a hit, I could give you five things that were really worth your attention. Jan Arden was worth your attention. Yeah. Went nowhere in this country. Thankfully, she's a superstar in Canada, and you yep. can get all of her stuff up there. But it's like, and and um, Joan Osborne wasn't bad either. And then you get crap yeah, but, like yeah, but this one that of becomes us was a huge hit. One of us was a huge hit, but the rest of her album bombed. 
Yeah. And this this thing. Well, the thing is, uh, while one of us was a huge hit, it also pissed people off. Mm, yeah. So, but I mean, know. really, you, uh, so you have Hawkins. you have a chorus that consists of. Mm-hmm. I'm like, did you forget the lyrics, dude? Number nine. Crash test dummies and mm, 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 from I think it was ninety four. Although I have hate to be that per- song. I have to be perfectly honest. The Weird Al parody news of the world is really well, funny. Weird Al is great, and it's, it's I think it's headline news. Headline headline news. Yeah. Headline news. It's dated now, but it's yeah, really, it is. really really but really Weird Al funny. rocks. Okay, uh, my number eight <laughs> um, should surprise absolutely nobody because I have ranted about this song. I don't like ranting like this because I really don't. I mean, I'm. We're all <laughs> sexual <laughs> beings. You know, once we hit a certain age and it's legal, we're all sexual beings, and that's fine. And sexual attraction is great, you know. But there are certain points where I. I do, and I don't mean to sound prudish or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But this is another song I was like, what did you just say? <laughs> uh, my number eight is Blurred Lines. Um, I, I don't like that song either. By uh, Robin Thicke, Pharrell Williams, and T.I. And according is- to the courts, also by Marvin Gaye, <laughs> which is completely ridiculous. But anyway. This is another one of they, these songs. I, I was surprised that they actually played that on the radio yesterday. I haven't heard I it since the lawsuit. I know. This is another one of these songs that... Um, the first time I heard it, I actually kind of reared up <laughs> like a cobra. It is you a great beat, it, but there's nothing much else worth listening to. I mean, to. the whole thing of this, the whole thing of the song is this, this part of the lyrics. Okay, now he was close, tried to domesticate you, but you're an animal, baby. It's just your nature. Just let me liberate you. Mm. You're talking about... De- Domesticating a woman and referring to her as an animal. He tried to domesticate you. Well, you're not. He's, he's telling you that he was but bad. But he's saying you're. A, but you're an animal. You're better than that. That's well, how I'm sure Robin and Pharrell were thinking when they wrote the lyrics. I um, hope. But of course, and the thing that really <laughs> like had me going. Excuse me. Mm. The whole you know. I know you want it. I know you want it. I know you want it. And my response to that was. Don't you tell me what I want. Who the F do you think you are? (laughs) I'm sorry. If a guy talked to me like that, he'd be picking up his teeth Mm -hmm. off the floor and Mm -hmm. possibly out in the hallway because I'd smack him that damn hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, My number eight, Blurred Lines. Believe me, the, the Glove and Boots version is much better. And so is the Weird Al version. The Weird Al? Oh, yeah, he did. He did um, a, a version that's all about pronunciation word, and word grammar. Crimes. Word crimes. Word crimes. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, my number eight, I I like this band. I've always liked this band. I grew up with this band. They were a terrific band back in the 60s. However. Um, well, they had some stuff that was good in the 70s, too, and 80s, and no, I'm 90s. No, I'm just wondering where we're going with this, because it's like, I really like them, but... they but haven't. they hadn't had a hit, a major hit, on the chart for um, probably at least a decade, if not further back. I think it was actually something like 24 years between their number one hits. And I'm like... And they and they pick this song to turn into a hit. Radio decides this is a song they like. And I don't know. It, it's just it's because it came from a popular movie, and it got tons of airplay because of that popular movie, that it was a big hit. And their follow up to this song was a classic that they did. I'll talk about in a minute. But this song, it always rubs me the wrong way. I just think it's stupid. Okay. I mean, okay, fine. Number eight, Kokomo by the Beach Boys. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Never could stand this. I love the no, Beach Boys. No, he can't. I can, I can Aruba, honestly attest. Jamaica, ooh, I want to take you to Bahamas. Da, da, da. I, I just, cocktail that's... cocktail for those of you who yeah, don't know. Yeah, I don't know why this song rubs me the wrong way. I just can't freaking I don't, stand it. I don't know, but I've I have... never liked I it. I have witnessed the full-on body cringe when he hears this And song, I'll be, so. turn the channel, switch the channels, turn the channel yeah 
Um, I hate that song. The follow-up to Kokomo was their unbelievably awesome cover of California Dreamin'. Yeah. Off the same album. And I'm like, how do you go from a piece of garbage like Kokomo to a, possibly the best remake of that song I've heard until Sia's came along? I mean, it's like, wow. Um, I just, it just annoys the hell out of me. Number, number eight, Kokomo, the Beach Boys. Okay. Blah. Um, my number seven <clears throat> song is a song that I have to be honest, I had never heard as a child. Um, I hadn't really heard it as, I never really heard it as a teenager either. Um, because we really did not play country music in my house. Um, okay, yeah. <clears throat> simply because neither of my parents like it. The closest country music I was exposed to was going to my, my Boston cousins. Boston was not a big country music town until now. No. Was going to my cousins and she would play, um, um, El- um, What's his name? I don't know. Um, what song? Oh, gosh. I lost John Denver. Oh. Like his real country. John Denver's not country. He's well, folk. Pop that, folk with country elements. The first Rant time I, coming, by the way. The first time I heard... Yes, there's a rant coming deal. <laughs> the first time I heard this song, I was like in my you know, maybe late teens, early 20s. And I was just kind of like... Just the the title of it had me going... Um, what does that mean? You know, I was like, oh, uh, all right. And then I heard the song and read the lyrics and was like, oh, hell no. My number seven is Stand By Your Man by Tammy Wynette. Classic country song, may I, may I point out. Number I one hit. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> I grew up in country music country. I know. I, I, I always loved it. hate this song. For those of you who have never heard this piece of dreck, <laughs> uh, Stand By Your Man is basically saying that whatever your man does, no matter how badly he treats you, he's your man and you have to stay with him. Now, some people have said because of one line in the song that it's really not as bad because it's saying... After all, because after all, he's just a man. Right, implying that the woman is better always, which is the truth, in most cases. Bull. <laughs> taking, well, it is. I mean, that's true. The, taking the cases. attitude of, well, he's just a man, is a grown-up version of the boys will be boys crap. F you, F that. The whole thing of this song is basically... You know, stand by your man and show the world you love him. Keep giving all the love that you can, you know, and be there for him when he comes home late and all this stuff like that. But the thing is, you can tell from the way this song is being written, he's not coming home, you know, late from work, trying to provide, trying to be a good husband, boyfriend, whatever. He's been out drinking with his buddies or, you know, sleeping with some other skank, and you're supposed to be taking him back in because he's your man. Kiss my white <laughs> Irish butt! <laughs> okay. There are not enough ways to say <laughs> okay, no. She's not done yet. No, no, I'm, I'm, no. This is it. I'm just saying. There are not enough ways to say no when it comes to this song. Except for just saying no. Mm. My number seven, stand by your man, Tammy Wynette, F off. Mm. <laughs> I like that song. Um, number seven uh, on my list, um, I first heard when I was sick at home from school in the summer of whatever it came out, 72 or 73. I think it was 72. And I had a fever. I wasn't feeling well. And I heard this song, and I'm like, oh, my God, this man can't sing. Turn it off. It's horrible. It's just this whiny piece of crap. And, I'm, and you have to understand, I was buying records. I was into music by the time I was three. Yeah, you're very, you've always been. I am a music fanatic. Very musically inclined. 50 years of it now. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Which is great. But this song. I've, I, I like him as a songwriter. I've, I've actually, you know, I can play a couple of his songs. I used to be able to on a guitar. I don't think I could anymore. But this song, 
it's just the vocal that just drives me crazy. Um, and I suppose it's a good sentiment, 70s sentiment, but when you're seven or eight years old and you're laying there with 101 fever, I forget what was wrong. I don't remember if I had measles or mumps or something. I'm gonna, and you hear, I want to live, I want to give, I'm always searching for a heart of gold by Neil, Neil Young. I freaking hate this song. His voice drives me up the wall. Yeah. It's not as bad as, say, Tom Waits, who's great great actor, great songwriter, can't sing a note to save his life. Or Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen at least could carry a tune if he needed to. Yeah. And and um and Bob Dylan is is not you know Hey, hey, hey how is with that you know, I like his songs, but again I only can sing. But oh my god, Neil Young's Heart of Gold drives me up the wall. I've never liked it. I will never like it. I don't care. I haven't I haven't even heard a cover version of it that I've liked. Instrumental, maybe, but no, nothing with vocals, because I just think the lyrics are insipid too. Number seven, Heart of Gold, Neil Young. Okay, um, my number six is an- <laughs> Oh boy, this is another one of these songs. I was like, the first time I heard. Is there it- any of these songs you picked that you're not going to have a freaking rant about? Well, the first time I heard it, the first time I heard it, I was just stunned. I was just really like. I didn't just hear. I tried to deny it. I was like, I didn't just hear that. And then the next time the song came on, I was like, nope. <laughs> I heard it, <laughs> and I went from six, you know, zero to rage monster in about five seconds. My number six, Rico Suave by Gerardo. <laughs> um, a Spanish dance rap. Piece of awesomeness. Piece of strutting. Oh, no know. way. Rico Suave rocks, this is man. Why, this is why I came up with the term, <laughs> you know, Rico Suave alpha male bull crap. Yeah. Which I use to describe some swaggering jerk that thinks he's all that in a bag of curly fries. That's basically what this song is about. This guy's singing about how he's a Latin lover and, you know, he loves girls, but he can't commit to them. And, you know, the whole thing about, like... No, he doesn't love girls. He loves sex. He loves sex, yeah. You know, he's saying, I don't love you, but I need you. Would you rather have me lie, take a piece of your pie and say bye, or be honest and rub your thighs? That's being honest. That should get you a taser in the crotch. <laughs> you know, I'm, I have lots of women mad at me after hearing this one. I am. I, I love no. Rico Suave. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I love that song. I am so <laughs> sorry, but no. Um, it's because I got to be honest. I love it because it's just so damn funny. You know, my you look whole, at the video and you realize just how over the top this thing is. You know, the whole thing of it is where he's talking about meeting the girl's parents and he's two hours late and all that stuff like that. And I'm listening to this, you know, being a kid from Massachusetts and I'm like, yeah, good luck showing up two hours late for your date with some girl from Southie, you know, who's got two big brothers <laughs> named Mike and Patrick. <laughs> and they're going to take you out back and nobody's going to see you again. You know, my number six, Rico Suave. I don't know. I should know what the Spanish for, you know, F off you sexist pig is, but I don't. Sorry. Um, you got to be honest, though. You do like other stuff by Gerardo. I liked his cover of, um, was, was it Play That Funky Music? Or, no, it was, um, something about... We got, we want the funk. Yeah, we want the funk, yeah. I like that, yeah. That was actually good. I like that a lot. And he's a, re- he's a really good singer, and he's a really, from and what i And he's an A&R rep at Endoscope Records these days. He doesn't, yeah, from what I've seen, he's a really nice guy, but at the time, I wanted to smack that smug little <laughs> smirk off his face and be like, put on a friggin' shirt. It's so you know? a parody, though. I mean, you really could tell it was a parody. Um, my number six is a song that Kim is sort of fond of, but it's not something she's terribly fond of. Well, I you just, hate it, so whatever. I hate it, it because I don't like the woman's voice. All right. And I don't like her pronunciations of things. And I'm like... I am completely stumped. No, you aren't. Um, she's from... I think they're Irish. I'm oh, not sure. okay. And I'm like... I just, number one, I find the music, they, they were part of the, of what they call that, the girl rock, G-R-R-L, yeah. rock era of the early 90s. 
And they just, some of that was good. Alanis was great. I loved her. And I like a lot of, yeah, uh, Alanis was, Tori the, Amos was okay depending on the song. And Sarah yeah, McLaughlin the, said the too. The thing is, Alanis is the, the patron saint's patroness saint of angry white chick music. Yeah. So, you know. But this thing, I don't, oh, I never could get into Dolores or Reardon's voice. She just, you know, when she can't pronounce the word for, She's I'm such a, a I'm such a fool for you. F U R Linger by the Cranberries. I utterly hate this song. She's Irish. That's the way they say it. That's her accent, and you're being a jerk. I don't like it. Uh, and I mean, do you have to let it linger? I'm like, oh god, really? Uh, yeah. okay. I I there's just I I I I literally have been known to like throw a radio. From time to time. And that song's one of them that makes me yes, do it. Yes, that is actually true. <laughs> I will attest to that. I hate that song. Number six, Linger by the Cranberries. All right. I don't ever want to hear that song again. Okay. Ever. This. Ever. My number five is one of those songs that I just don't like because it's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's no other way to put it. This song has been done by a lot of different people. And in, no matter who does it. It's still stupid. But you have one that you obviously don't like more than the others, I hope. Yeah. Okay. My number five is MacArthur Park. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm go. I'm talking about specifically about the version sung by Richard Harris, <laughs> um, which I remember hearing when I was a, a little girl. I mean, you know, five, six in there yeah. somewhere. And on, on oldies radio, obviously. Well, no, it was on AM radio. I mean, which, which, at the time you were five or six, would have been oldies radio because it was a hit in 1968. So you would have I guess, it. whatever. It was, all I know is I had no control over the radio. That was my parents' domain. Yeah. So, you know, it would that, and I would hear it on the radio when my dad would be, like, washing the car or whatever, just have the radio on. And, I mean, I really didn't pay much attention to the song at first and, you know, until I heard the word cake. And I was like, ooh, this is a song about cake. And then I'm listening to the song and I'm like, I don't know what this song means <laughs> and i was like i remember thinking well i should probably ask mom and dad no i was like that's probably not a good idea they're not going to know what it means either <laughs> and as i got older i was like well maybe i'll understand it when i get older and i just filed it away in the back of my mind and then i heard the donna summer version and i was like oh wow that's that song from when i was a little kid and i'm like really listening to it and i'm like what the F is this song about? <laughs> I don't. I still don't know what this damn song is about. You know, I'm sorry. I'm like, is it a relationship? Is it somebody having a crisis of faith? Is it somebody having a bad acid trip? What is this song about? Any and Get all it? of which were possible when it was out in the 1960s. I just, I don't know. That song, it confuses me and it irritates me. I mean, some songs confuse me, but they intrigue me because of the lyrics or the music or right. whatever. This song confuses me and irritates me. Do you want me to explain like I, what I told you? Yes, please. The song it's still is, not going to help. No. But. The song MacArthur Park is actually a coda to a full-length cantata written by the songwriters behind the group The Association in the 1960s. They had hits with Along Comes Mary and Windy and a number of other things. Jimmy Webb was the, the principal songwriter. And he wrote this cantata and it meant that it was going to be a concept album. They never did record the whole album, and they gave MacArthur Park to Richard Harris. And, yeah, it what doesn't... What did he do to them that he deserved that? <laughs> Were they angry? I, with I him? actually don't mind Richard's version, but yes. I love Donna Summer's version. Ugh. I always will. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry. My number five, MacArthur Park. This <laughs> song sucks. There, I said it, and I'm not sorry. My number five is one of those songs that everybody else loves, and I just can't get behind. It's one of these songs that it. I wish I could figure out what irritates me so bad about this song you like it mm -hmm. um although to my credit i don't think i don't think stacy was a big fan of this song either because i remember having a, a rather pithy discussion about it with her at one point and i'm like this is i was just listening to the radio one day and this song comes on and i'm like what's the, are they speaking english they are speaking english aren't they 
what kind of an accent is that? And then I looked at them and we saw the video and I'm like, oh, okay, now I get why people are calling them the Nerdy Nelson. I'm like, okay. okay. My number five is I'm going to be subtitled 500 Miles by the Proclaimers from 2000, uh, from 93? I think it came out before I moved up there. There was another song that was in a movie, though, so I think that's why it was in Vinny and June, wasn't it? That's why I think it was. Yeah, so 94, 95. Oh, my God. They played this thing. We played it at Coconuts, too, so it was after I moved up here. This was. Oh, you always liked it. I just thought it was sweet. You think it's sweet and cute, but there's something. And I've also heard a a kind of punk version that I really liked. It was just. Well, I could play Yummy, Yummy, Yummy by Elvis Hitler if you like. That. No. <laughs> no, that's um, not punk. That's just noise. Um it's it's scream it it's scream core. It yeah. Hurts. Um this there's just something about this song. They just, I mean it was on the other day. The video played the other day. We were we were just flipping around. We had the v, uh MTV 80s thing on. Mm-hmm. And or 90, it must have been eight, 90s and I'm like or 2000s whatever it was and it's like oh god, of all the songs they have to play, they have to play this song. Because I don't know what it is about those two, the brothers that are from Scotland, if I'm not mistaken. They just drive me crazy. I, and that song drives me crazy. And I don't like it. It sucks. Um, it's just so, so repetitive in the middle. Uh, number six, I'm going to be 500 Miles by the Proclaimers. You're a fan of Hanson's Mbop, and you're going to complain about something else. Mbop actually repetitive? has meaning. Well, mm. The lyrics have meaning. It's a rather depressing song. It's a very depressing song if you actually read the lyrics. It's, anyway, all right. So uh, my number four is a should come as a surprise to absolutely nobody who <laughs> knows me, who grew up with me, or anything like that. <clears throat> um, this is one of the ones that I have a feeling I'm going to get in trouble for. I don't care. I grew up in this area. So I have a right to bitch about this band. So it has something to do with new kids on the block. You're water. damn right it does. <laughs> and this was another one I was like, ooh, there's so many choices here. What do I pick? What do I pick? I came very close to picking Hanging Tough, but that song... You have a good reason. That's the worst of all their hits. That song just made me laugh till I cried. I mean, <laughs> the whole, you know, these guys are out there being all like Hanging Tough, and I'm like, please stop my ribs. I can't take it. Um, my num- But that's not the one I picked. Although I almost also picked Please Don't Go, Girl, because that song just made me want to jump in front of a... Okay, anyway. Um, My number four is You Got It, The Right Stuff by New Kids on the Block. (laughs) If you don't stop singing that, you're going to get I'm singing singing Weird Al's version. Uh, Oh, man. I hate this song. (laughs) I hate this band. I mean... I really do. One of these days she's going to go see them in concert with me. I'll get her there eventually. Um, I don't know where you're going to get the straight jacket that you're going to have to drag No, you'll go. I'll simply guilt you into going. It's very easy to do. I love New Kids on the Block, by the way. I, I'm sorry. This I've been on is... I've been on the New Kids bandwagon since the first album, three years before they became big stars. I'm sorry. I grew Like I said, I grew up in Massachusetts when... New Kids Mania hit, and it was horrifying. <laughs> um, Give the little teeny bopper girls something to have. And this song, you had Motley Crue and those guys. Let them have New Kids. They're safer. I, that's my point. Yeah, that's entirely my point. I know they weren't meant for you. They were meant for the the teenies. Um, this song is just so insipid and so. Ugh. <laughs> I just there there aren't enough words to say how much I despise <laughs> this song. Um, I just I hate it. I just really hate it. Um, my number four, you got it, the right stuff from New Kids on the Block. Well, at least it wasn't Step by Step, which is a really good song. Um, my number four is um, this is another song I grew up listening to because it was popular on the radio when I was first really getting into the charts when I was in fourth and fifth grade, and I was like. Number one, okay, I get it. The high school kids get it because it, oh, it mentions dope. It has dope in it. And I'm like, that's why it's a hit. That's why it was a number one hit. I'm still convinced that's why it was a number one hit because if you actually listen to the lyrics and you listen to the music, 
you realize just what a messed up, insipid, stupid song this is? And yet, it's still the guy's biggest hit. And I'm like, why is this a classic rock staple? I mean, it's so insipid that he had to make up a phrase to put in the song to talk about what he's talking about in one section, that phrase ended up taking on a life of its own and eventually became a title of a movie. And I'm like, there is no such thing as the pompousness of love, you pipsqueak. My number four is Steve Miller's The Joker. Oh my God, I hate this song. Every We hear wow. it at least once a week on classic radio driving to the, to, um, in the cab, driving yeah. to the, to the T. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, what, is the big thing about this song. Number one, he's off-key half the time. Number two, lyrically, it's just insipid from beginning to end. He's got some great guitar in it. I suppose that's something. But I'll take Abracadabra and some of his later stuff rather than this, and Fly Like an Eagle, which was a classic, compared to this crap. And The Joker was his first really big hit, and I just... Only because it mentions I'm a toker in the, in the, in the chorus did that song become a hit. That is the sole reason it became a hit. Because parent, kids knew, teenagers knew it would drive their parents nuts. Hmm. You might they, be on to something. Number four, The Joker by Steve Miller. Okay. <laughs> My number three song that I absolutely hate. Um, we're getting into territory where we're going to tie on at least one. I probably. I don't know if it's going to be this one though. No. This no, I know we won't tie on this. Is one. Is one of the most annoying, stupid, irritating songs I have ever heard in my life. So you don't like it? I don't like it. <laughs> Over the last decade or so. People have been talking about, like, you know, the dumbing down of culture and the dumbing down of society and all this stuff like that. Now, I, trying to be a more optimistic person, am like, gosh, I think that's being unfair. You know, because there's a lot of really smart people out there. I'm like, I think you're not being very fair to people saying things like that. Mm -hmm. And then this song becomes a hit, and I'm like, you know, they might actually have a point. (laughs) My number three is what... Does the fox say <laughs> by Yivis or Yelvis or Yelvis? Okay, where to begin with this musical torture device? I actually forgot about that one too. I don't like that one either. So if yeah. they played this song at Gitmo, it would have been closed years ago. <laughs> I mean, you are in deep, deep trouble. When the whole thing of your song, before you actually get to the chorus of your song, is talking about the sounds animals make. I'm like, they used a speaking spell to write the lyrics for this song, you know, or one of those things that you had when you were a kid that, you know, you pointed the arrow and you pulled the string and it spun around. I remember those. those, Yeah. (laughs) I had those. One of those things. And the whole thing of the song is this whole thing about what what does a what does the fox say? And they make all these weird noises about what they think the fox says. Okay, mystery solved. Foxes bark. Pay me. <laughs> I'm a regular Jessica Fletcher. Uh, foxes bark. Sometimes they no, hiss. No, you're not. We know you can't solve the uh, average murder she wrote. Shut up. Well, I'm just saying. Foxes bark. They hiss. Sometimes they whine. I'm sure they yip every <laughs> once in a while. But they don't make the noises that they say they make in this song. And if they did, there would be something seriously wrong with them. I can't stand this piece of crap. Number three by Yelvis. What does the fox say? I never heard that song until they used it on Dancing with the Stars. i have honest to God, I'd never heard of it. And it had apparently been this big, big hit. And I'm like, really? Why? Uh, because um, it's like, yeah, because I don't like it either. Because apparently doing a shite ton of Molly wrecks your hearing. Oh, I don't now, know. now, come on. That's mm. not nice. You have no proof of stuff like that. Mm. My number three, she's going to be upset with me about. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. I have been no. I've if you're, been a, if you're a listener of Subject Cinema, you know I have no love lost for this person. I have not liked this person from the very first hit she had about five or six years ago, to the point where she is now. Mostly because I don't like her personal life from what I've read in the gossip columns. I don't like the way that she 
uh, you know, Kate takes a guy and throws them aside for another guy every six weeks. And I, I think that's wrong. And you're always saying you shouldn't kiss and tell, and that's all her songs are, are kiss and tell songs. Has she ever said that? No, but it's kind of obvious, and Nick Jonas has said that about uh, Paranoid. She was dating Joe at one point, and they wrote Paranoid about her. So it's like, okay, that's interesting. I'm sorry, if she hasn't said what the songs are about, then the fact that other people interpret it that way <laughs> I told you she was going to defend fault. her. There's one song in particular that drives me up the wall, and, and I, I mean, I don't like anything. I wouldn't mind seeing her whole freaking catalog thrown into the, to the sun, except the song she did for the Hunger Games movie. I like that one. It's the only song she does that I like. But this one, I just don't like the woman, and I don't like any of her songs. And the one that number three is the one that just drives me up the wall. Shake it off by Taylor Swift. I cannot stand this woman. I cannot stand this song. I also don't like we are never ever ever getting back together. A little bit more, a uh, little bit of ridiculous Chris Jericho in the title there. Um, but it's like. <laughs> I don't like this girl. I don't like her at all. I don't understand what the world sees in this woman. She's shallow. She's like a total douchebag. She's, I, I mean, every, even, even to other women have said what a, what a diva she is. I'm like, why do you, well then why do you continually pump her by buying her the equivalent of musical baby food? Would you please tell me that, please? Please? Somebody please tell me why this woman's 15 minutes of fame aren't up? Number two, number three, shake it off by the thankfully inimitable Taylor Swift. Wow. And everything else she ever did, too, except the Hunger Games. Okay. Um, I have a feeling we're going to I gonna can't tie. believe you're going to make me defend Taylor Swift. I don't make you to defend anything. You like her. I don't I don't mind you like her. I don't like, ask me to listen to her. I like a few songs. I like Shake It Off. I know because you I, do. Because I like the sentiment behind it, you know. <sighs> But the simple fact of the matter is that, you know... Sentiment does not a good song make. Simple fact of the matter is that if a guy goes out there and does all the, the you know, stuff where they're dating a bunch of people, you know, one after another, they're a player, they're this, that, and the other thing, but a woman does it and she's a slut and she's a this and that and the other thing. Double standard much? No, I don't think so because I don't think it's played off the same way. A lot of people say the same thing about men that do that today. It's changed in the last twenty years. Mm, I don't think so, as much. I don't think it's changed as much as. Well, you unless do. you're a rap star, and then they can get away with pretty much anything. Hmm. Uh, okay. Anyway, I know. <laughs> see that. See now. It's about to. The shoe's about to go on the other foot, and Savat oh, kick you. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Savat kick you in the head. I guess um, we didn't tie on anything then. Okay. Number two on my list is a song that I did not put on my list for the sole purpose of pissing you off. <laughs> Although that is a bonus. Um, oh, no, it's not going to piss me off. I, really, I already know how you feel about this song. I really don't like this song. If it's the one I think it is. And I know some people out there are going to be completely horrified that I don't like this song. But I'm going to be honest. I've never liked it. Okay. Even though Stacy and I were actually thinking of writing a script about it at one point and turning it into, an, into a movie. Um, okay, now I'm mystified. My number two is Escape, the Pina Colada oh. song by Rupert Holmes. No, that annoys a lot of people. You're not alone. Yeah. Our, I our, like it. I think it's cute. But Yeah, our treatment was going to have a bar fight at the end. Um, <laughs> big bar fight and they're under the table. Most and, people you know. know Escape as, if you like Pina Coladas. Because Escape only comes in at the very end of each chorus. Yeah. And you, they don't it's realize a, that it's the title it's of the song. It's a story song about a guy <laughs> who is tired of his woman. I'm assuming they're just dating. I'm not, I'm, I, no, they live together well, in the song. Well, I, yeah. They're, what I mean is they're not married. They're not married, no. Right. They're, he's tired of his girlfriend. And so he, while she's in bed, he's going and looking in the personal ads. Okay, first of all, right there, you are a giant douche nozzle. <laughs> and he reads... Will you please quit using that word? Family show. I could call him a goat humper. Would that make it better? <laughs> um, I'm sorry I've caused an episode. I'll continue. So he... Is, you do that. He's reading the personal ads, and he finds this ad that intrigues him. And he... The, the song continues from there... 
And <clears throat> at the end of the song, <clears throat> he meets the person in a bar, and in a twist worthy of M. Night Shyamalan, it turns out that the person who wrote the ad is actually his girlfriend. Who was tired of him and didn't realize that she was doing the same thing that he was doing. Yeah. And the end of And the- it resparks their it rekindles their romance. Yeah. F the both of you. <laughs> You're both shallow examples of why the late seventies and early eighties were crap. You know, it, these are just two people that are complete narcissistic jerks. Well, there, there was know? a reason they called the seventies the me decade. Yeah, because for the most part, it was a bunch of jerks, you know, a bunch of pompous, strutting <laughs> jerks. The only good thing to only come you out- could take a sweet love song like that and twist it into that. <laughs> <laughs> there were very few good things that came out of the seventies. One of them was Star Wars. Another one was Kiss. Um, uh. I can't stand this song. I have never liked it. I really think these people are annoying. And I personally don't care whatever happens to them and if their relationship lives or dies. It makes no difference to me. (laughs) My number two, the Pina Colada... Escape the Pina Colada song by Rupert Holmes, who has actually said he doesn't like Pina Coladas. No. Which I'm like, that's just... He's got on to Broadway. Well, that's only because you can't write... Because there are no rhymes for Jaeger bombs. So, you know, it's like... What are you going to do? Uh, my number two, um, lyrically, p- quite possibly, is the most insipid song ever written. Um, and that's saying something. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's kind of hard when you're kind of throwing those magic uh, magnet things on on a wall and getting the lyrics for the song. You know, it's like that's the only way you can think of that, unless you're that really that, that freaking stupid that this is all you think of all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't care if you're like 15, 14, 15. This is like, good God, these lyrics could be could have been written by an orangutan. And I mean, I mean, and if it's the song I'm the, thinking, the, the thing, the sad thing is, she sold two million copies of it on iTunes. <laughs> yes, it is. How in the world did Friday by Rebecca Black ever become a hit? Um, oh my God! It's Friday! Night. It's Friday! Da, 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 da. Party and party and yeah! Party and party and yeah! So she's away. actually not a bad singer, thanks to auto tune. I was gonna say, take away her auto tune, but- <laughs> she's rendered mute. <laughs> I mean, just for and just for expedience' sake, um, Friday is it's my number, number one, one yeah, song. I know. I yeah, I had a feeling. Um, um it, it's like. I mean, this this song shows. The ultimate shallowness of the American female teenager. Does it not? Mm. I mean, it does party, make- friends, shopping, music. That's all this song is about. It does make you worry this is the future generation. Yes. It, it does make What happened think- to the Pepsi generation? They turned out kids like this. Stop drinking Pepsi. Um... Actually, wasn't that us? Yes, I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah. And I, I have my am, Pepsi right here. I'm not taking any responsibility for that because I am not a breeder. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, my number one is Friday. Good grief. Have fun. I, I can't My number this. two is Friday by Rebecca Black. Go ahead. The only time this song ever floats into my head willingly is when it's Friday the 13th and I see memes online of stuff with her and Jason that never end well. Um, <laughs> That's a good thing, isn't it? Well, you know. Unless they're not music, ending well for Jason. For music lovers. Uh, it could be worse. What? If you lived in the Pacific, if you lived in the New England area, I don't know if, it, if they're a national company or not, oh, but man. Cole's department store picked up her song as a Christmas jingle. Once, one, one year. Yeah. Black Friday, Black Friday. I'm like, oh my God, really? This was right after the song. It wasn't, <sighs> it wasn't right after the song came out. It was the year out. after. It was the, but it was like this song was, had finally gone away. Yeah. And it, it was, and it then was like hearing, this song um, comes back. That same year. Wasn't that the same year that we had that horrible mix of, um, Sleigh Ride by Mannheim Steamroller matched with Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice it might for, have been, for, I don't know. One of those clothing stores. Seriously, this Gap, I think this song sucks. I feel badly that Rebecca was so badly bullied that she had to leave school. That's not a cool thing. But dear, but you, she's crying all the way to the bank. Dear, you can't sing. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. There, maybe okay. You, you, your singing is passable. I've heard worse. Oh you, yeah, I have too. You can't write lyrics. No lyrics. Lyrics. I mean, terrible. you said you said that this terrible, this terrible. song seems to have been written by an orangutan. Um, yeah, that's an insult to orangutans. I know. Yeah, I was thinking a sea urchin, <laughs> a drunk <laughs> sea urchin. Um, so my number one, Rebecca Black, Friday. You know what Yikes. my number one is. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Um, Indeed, I do. This song was popular in the early 90s. Don't ask us why. No. And I've never liked the song, but the video repulses me even more. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm a disco fan. I like disco. I grew up in the disco era. I was a big disco fan when I was in high school. I was and the yet only I one. still love him. Aren't I patient? I was the only one in town, practically, where I lived. But I, I enjoyed the music. And this song is pseudo disco, but it just doesn't. I don't know what it is about the woman. I don't think she can sing that well, and and it. Uh, I don't know. It just made me crazy, and I, to this day, I just freak out anytime I see it or hear it. I just hate it. I just like get that piece of crap off. Groove is in the heart by Delight. Uh, Kim has been at my at the at the end of my temper with this song a couple of times. Yeah, I don't know why I hate this song so much. But, the video uh, is, the video is painful. If you have issues with swirly kind of colored <laughs> stuff in the background, because the back it looks that's like not it. It's just the video is just bad. Well, the clothes are hurt. The clothes hurt, and the video is just bad. It's just them strutting around, flashing their arms around, and I'm like. This was what they were doing in videos back then, in from 90 to 93. And I'm like, what in the world? Now, my friend Alan loved this song. <laughs> no, no surprise there, because um, this song did seem to pander to the gay community where it came to the music end of it. They, it was a big hit in gay clubs, but it's like, I'll never understand why. Hmm. Uh, because, I mean, I understand it's got a sort of good dance beat. Lyrically, again, though, it's just like, okay, the sentiment's kind of good, but the lyrics could be better, and the music itself sucks. I will never understood why this song became a, a big hit. Don't look at me. My number one song, I want to banish every copy of To the Sun Forever, Groove is in the Heart by Delight. Okay. So I guess we should <coughs> go through our list. Recap. All right. Uh, 10 to 1 of my list of songs that I can't stand. Uh, Want You Back, Cher Lloyd. Uh, number 10. Number 9, Under My Thumb, The Rolling Stones. Number 8, Blurred Lines, Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams and T.I. Number 7, Stand By Your Man, Tammy Wynette. Number 6, Rico Suave Gerardo. Number 5, MacArthur Park, Richard Harris. Number 4, You Got It, The Right Stuff, New Kids on the Block. <laughs> Number 3, What Does the Fox Say by Yelvis. Number 2, Escape, The Pina Colada Song by Rupert Holmes. And number 1, Friday right, by Rebecca Black. Where's Jolene? You hate Jolene. I, I thought hate sure Jolene. you. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought sure it would be on your top ten. Yeah. I got to admit, I didn't think of it. That's. What, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, you did. You brought it up. We we're talking about it. Oh, I'll right. be honest. An, I actually thought there was one, another song that would be on your list that isn't. What's that? I was sure you were going to put Freebird on your list. No, I like Freebird. I just think it's too long. I think it's a long song, and, and you're always. I'm surprised that's little... not on your list. What? Freebird, I love your way, baby. I love your uh -huh. way, medley by. Will you're Power. always saying it's overrated. It is overrated, but it's a good song. Most of you 2 stuff is overrated, too, but that doesn't mean I don't like the music. Hmm. I just don't think they're the rock gods that everybody else does. Hmm. My top 10 looked like this, or my, actually my, my dishonorable 10 looks like this. Number 10, Mambo, number 5 by Lou Vega. Number 9, mm, 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 by Crash Test Dummies. Number 8, Kokomo by the Beach Boys. Number 7, Heart of Gold by Neil Young. Number 6, Linger by the Cranberries. Number 5, I'm Gonna Be 500 Miles by the Proclaimers. Number 4, The Joker by Steve Miller. Number 3, Shake It Off, and most all of her other stuff as well, by Taylor Swift. Number 2, Rebecca Black's Friday. And number 1, Groove is in the Heart by Delight. Okay. <laughs> Hate that song. All right, well, 
<laughs> now, this was fun. Yeah, this was interesting. I'm sure we pissed a lot of people off. I know we did. I don't care. Uh, it's our list. Well, yes. We have a right to our personal taste. Yes, we do. Absolutely, we do. And we'd love to hear yours. Are there any songs that you absolutely cannot stand and would be happy if you never heard again? We'd you love know what else know. isn't on your list that you should have been? What? What happened to Hotel California? You hate that, too. Yeah, I do hate that. <laughs> I only hate that. I Yeah, but the thing is, I didn't use... When I was younger... It was the rep- repetition yeah, that Joy did. When yeah. it was younger, I really Joy's didn't mind it. Yeah, one summer, my sister, whom I adore, but she can drive me insane. Um, but that's what younger siblings do. Um, she found this song. and Now, granted, you remember, found it. This was the early, mid-80s. Yeah. The song came out in 1977. Actually, so. later 80s, I think. Okay. She just found this song one summer and played it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And now when I say play it over and over and over, I mean literally she would play it and then rewind the tape and, and then play, play it, again. it again. Lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> and I got to the point where I was like, I'm going to hide that tape. Or I'm going to microwave it. <laughs> or I'm just going to throw it out the damn window. I just... And I, I did develop a dislike of the song simply because it's a repeti- it was repetitive. I mean, I hear it on the radio now and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's on. You know, it, does, it, doesn't, yeah. it, it doesn't induce that. Oh, crap. It not does, it's not cringe-inducing anymore. Huh? It's not cringe-inducing anymore. No. Another song that I thought would be on your list isn't there is Walking in Memphis by Mark Cohen. I know you don't care for that either. I don't care I for it, but I don't hate it. Okay, good. All right. So there's that. All right. Let's have your call, honey. Okay. What are we doing? next week um my suggestion unless you guys give us a better suggestion we're always listening for you yeah at front row at pnrnetworks.com please write in and let us know what you think of the show give us your ideas for lists if we use it if we use your list idea you're going to get a prize and your name on the show and that's a cool thing definitely so okay so my idea for a list next week Uh is a little different uh oh. It's it's a multi multi um you can use different categories, movies, TV books, comic books, whatever you want. Okay. Our so it's an encompassing uh media. All encompassing media. Okay. Your top ten top ten to one mm-hmm. most dangerous myth magical or mystical creatures. Okay. Things that you... Again, things, she's throwing out a category I know nothing about. Okay. No, th- seriously. When you think about it, this, you know, this real, this, like I said, this encompasses anything. Movies, TV, books, comic books, okay. whatever you want. You know, what do you, th- what do you think are more dangerous? Are, you know, are kaiju more dangerous than giant robots or, you know, that kind of a thing? Well, those aren't ma- magical or mystical creatures, though. Well... Not that, not not under the strictest term of magical or mystical creatures, those were those are just monsters. Well, that's what I'm talking about. You know, monsters, aliens, all that kind of stuff. Not no, actual non living creatures of some sort. Non human creatures. All right, this should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the most dangerous, and why? And that's going to be our list. Okay. Okay. I guess we'll give it a shot. <laughs> I think we'll have fun with it. You always do. I had a hell of a time with the WTF, Mom, but it took me three weeks to get that list ready. Thank goodness we were off the air. Um, uh, before we go, let me remind you, Subject Cinema, every Sunday, all summer long, is turning its corner and taking the top down and heading out to that big screen in the middle of the countryside. It is Subject Cinema's drive-in summer. It kicks uh-huh. off this Sunday on uh, Memorial Day weekend and we'll run every Sunday through Labor Day <laughs> with all kinds of drive-in centric stuff as well as our regular features and stuff and we hope you will come along and spread the word to your friends that we're going to be out there promoting and saluting drive-ins of all over the country and there's still there's still over 300 of them hanging on and and still doing well and that's all part of Subject Cinema's drive-in summer Go to subjectcinema.com for more information and check out the new website this weekend. You're going to have lots of fun with it. Yeah. Also, Platinum Rose's Garden is about to wrap things up on the regular season. Yeah. 
Um, we have come to the end of season 12 of Supernatural, uh, but I hope you will come and check out my show that's up right now, which is a double review of... Because um, it was a double episode. Uh, the end of Supernatural for the season. Um, the episodes Who We Are and All Along the Watchtower, that review is up right now. This weekend, I will be putting up another show where I'm looking back at season 12 in review, and I hope you will check that out over at PlatinumRosesGarden.com. And we hope you'll check out our mini-shows every Tuesday and Friday, Tuesday Digitex with all the new DVD, Blu-ray, and on-demand releases, and Three Minute Weekend with all the theatrical films hitting uh, that weekend in both the big multiplexes and the local indie cinemas. They both are up at 10 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday and Friday, respectively. Also, uh, Catastrophe Vortex (laughs) is coming back soon. I'm sorry it's been so busy. Uh, that's my show about disaster movies. Hope to have one up this weekend and then back on the Wednesday schedule. Again, it's been really kind of hard to do it with everything going on. Uh, and I have so much I want to do. And thankfully, I still have people interested in listening. So hopefully you come out there at CatastropheVortex.com. Hopefully this weekend, if not next Wednesday. And our other shows on our network, we have Cave Babble with Eric and Valerie Lyon. Uh, they're currently on hiatus for a little mm-hmm. while. Eric's going to be contributing to Subject Cinema's Drive-In Summer. And uh, uh, the, all their old episodes are up. Plenty of stuff about games, movies, TV shows, odd things to eat, and a lot more at kbabble.com. And debuting this weekend, I think, or next weekend, possibly, our brand new show from the people behind Mashed Up Madness, Ant B and Pee Wee in Comic Grotto. This is going to be all about comics Specific comics, like specific issues, Mm -hmm. and it's going to be definitely fun. Plus, Anthony will also be contributing to the drive-in summer shows, and we're going to have a lot of fun with that as well. Cool. (laughs) Don't forget to check out all of our regular stuff throughout the week on East Cinema 1 and East Cinema Boston, where we have the latest news and stuff up, all about film and about the... uh, uh, Boston-centric se- uh, scene. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, you can check out all of our other blogs and other f- sites and such right from our websites. And we are now available on Medium at medium.com backslash eCinema1 hyphen eCinema Boston. All of the stories from both of those coming to your Medium feed every day. Don't forget to check that out. Yep. And don't forget to write to us on Twitter. You I are. am Platinum Roselle at Twitter.com. And I am uh, usually uh, East Cinema Boston and East Cinema One. And also coming shortly, I will be bringing back something that's been off the air for a little while because I've been trying to get it all squared away. But this, this show is perfect for this. The Kirkham Report will be back on uh, Sunday, June 4th. All new website, all new stations, all new playlists, everything music. That's my specialty. I love music. And as much as I love movies, I love music, I think, even more. And I hope you'll come over and check out charts, news, and all kinds of stuff at thekirkhamreport.com beginning June 4th. Mm-hmm. And we are hoping that you enjoyed this episode of Front Row 5 and 10. And we hope we can count on you to come back next week and help us count up our next list. For Front Row 5 and 10, I'm Kim Brown. I'm T.C. Kirkham. And we'll see you next week. Bye. been listening to Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and T.C. Kirkham. Podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24-7. The Empire.